If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Did you know that years ago when movies started getting popular in movie theaters, they had smell vision Right. At one point, did you know what that? A, what a terrible idea. Did you know that? smell vision like, Yeah. So what they would do is they, they put these like... Like these little things on your chairs that would squirt out yeah, a spray. Mist, like of Yeah, air. so like you're watching a movie and then like they're going through like a, a jungle or something and, they, and you'd be like, yeah. oh, I could smell it. Or, oh, that smells like bubble gum. Yeah. Yeah, they did all these experimental things with movies because they were so new and so cool. You know what I mean? I didn't know that. must have been so annoying. There was another one where they would like, they would vibrate your chair if something happened in the movie. and yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, that still exists. They brought that back. They yeah. have those. Yeah, uh, D-Box it, seats. Yeah, D-Box that's annoying. I've, I I've I tried a D box seat and uh, I did that with my my kids. I think we watched. I forget it wasn't Star Wars, but it was one of the, like a big uh, epic movie. And the whole time it was like I was like all over the place, dude. Yeah, I don't whiplash. even like I don't even like three D. Yeah, I yeah, even think 3D, I even think three D is yeah, 3D's distracting. Three D is too much. What they need to do Except with for Avatar. What I want them to do with three D is I want a. A goggles instead of glasses because it's really annoying to me that I'm in. You can see the outside. Yes, of it. I'm yeah. 3D yes. here, but then on the outside, I have. It, it, I don't like that at all. So I think goggles and then a screen that comes further around, okay. so you really feel inside of it. You want to hear my idea? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, I know somebody's going to rip this off and do it way before me anyway, so might as well put it. You out might there. as well just be the first. I'll one be to the say first it. to say yeah. it. Okay, I was going to like if I was to develop a movie. Just like you kind of got glimpses of it in Avatar where you put three dimensions, but it basically puts you into the, not the foreground, but the background and it like gave you more depth. So you remember that one scene where they're kind of floating and you see like people like in the distance and you see little drops kind of coming down. Like you could see a lot further. Okay. 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 So think about that. Like, so you have kind of an adjacent story happening in the background, but like only if you concentrate on it. So you could see like depth wise. Well, like, Ready Player like One's kind of like that, dude. Two movies within a movie. Yeah, Ready Player One's kind of like that. Pretty much. You like that's a little distract. Are you sober? <laughs> no, I'm saying if you that that would make you want to go see it again because you could see how like things were were, were so happening. You know, in the, the, be- the best movies are like that though. Where like you know what movies are like that? Uh, Fight Club was like that. Where mm-hmm. the Easter eggs. In the all. Yeah, Matrix. that's what I'm saying. It's been done on yeah. different levels. I'm talking about the Matrix pers- perspective. Yeah. Like so, so if you do foreground and background, you yeah. fuck with that. Ready Player further. One was like that. Though, it is. Where you're watching it, and I know I missed five different. That's why I could watch it again. Okay. Yeah. Because there, I, I like even the opening scene was so. I mean, as soon as the movie started, I looked at the kitchen. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be great. Yeah. yeah. Like I was right away because you know right away this, oh, without ruining the movie, right? The opening scene, I'm like, it's 2045, and I'm like, this could be what 2045 looks like. Holy fuck! They did dude. a good job with they that. They did a very good job. Actually, of, they did a good job of of showing what a, a dystopian future, but also. You still in, you, the, the the characters are still endearing, and you still kind of like it. Hmm. So although it's like, ah, oh, I'd hate to live in this world, it's also like, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you know what I mean. I could see this actually happening. Hmm. They did. They, you know, it's hard to balance on that line, right? Yeah, of either one. They did a phenomenal job. Well, really I can't job. wait to see it now. Yeah, yeah. no, you need to, you need to go see it. So they stole my idea. Fine. So we can openly right. talk. Be- about the show. Speaking of breakthrough technology, because that's what they show in that movie so much. Brain FM. Yeah, we got him here. That's, oh, man. That's, uh, of all the the products Validated. and stuff that we've been introduced to you know, through Mind Pump, that's the one that I think all of us use consistently. More than anything else. Yeah. Consistently. More than any supplement I take, more than any drink I use, more than any, well, coffee. Could, close could be close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. We do They're drink, competitive. We do drink a lot of coffee. Dude, coffee and but, focus. It's like boom, boom. But you can get almost coffee anywhere, right? So well, the th- science behind it is crazy. And what they're doing, what's in, in the horizon for them, which we which we hear in this episode. Dude. We talked to Dan Clark, who's the, the CEO of the company, and what they have on the horizon with Brain FM and their, I guess, patented the way they do their sounds and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. It's actually ext- Did he talk about? Can I talk about? Yeah, the government grants. And did, all he, that did, stuff. did he say yeah, that on the show? Did. Yeah. Did, okay. Oh, yeah, he talks that. about it. I know it's not happened yet, right? No, uh, no. But, work, but there's a lot of uh, there's some research going into how to use some of their focus sounds mm-hmm. to treat uh, ADD in kids. Mm-hmm. 
which is super exciting. Oh my god, to have alternatives to that instead of uh, medicating all the Dude, time. Dude, the, the the medication rate among children with for with ADD medications is exploded. Well, it, he talks about the success rate in here too. It blows my mind. Oh, it's, it's staggering. I know. Yeah. I feel it. Like if I put on focus within. And I've tested this many times where I'm like, okay, I need to write a blog or something. Like, I am not in the mood. I am not focused. There's no way. I put on the headphones and about five to 10 minutes into it, I find myself kind of enthralled in what I'm doing. It legit works. I mean, there's not a lot of things like supplements, things out there that get me excited. This is one of those, it's it just, it works. Like I, I use it time and time again. It's like, it so surprises me how effective it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the products too, that when I turn somebody on to it, it's not whether or not it works or doesn't work for you. It's the level of what it works to. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, I tried it out. That was really cool. You know, it helped me sleep or, oh, it helped me meditate. Cool. Or it's like I'll use it occasionally. Holy shit! Yeah. That was a game. Like for me, it was like a holy shit because yeah, it was the same. Yeah, that was such a game changer for me. I mean, we use it every time we travel. I especially when I'm uh, away, I, I don't sleep as well in other people's beds or hotels or things like that than my own, and so it's a must that I travel. With the that. sleep one for me was the one that I used the most at first, but then focus became like I use focus a lot, and I can only imagine if I had to because our job doesn't require. Like, I'm not sitting in front of a computer screen all day long. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it's easy for me to pay attention because we're having conversation. I could only imagine if I had to sit down on a computer screen and do, like, dedicated work all day long and how beneficial this, you know, the, the focus songs and sounds would be. I always use it when I'm on the computer. Like yeah. That. Yeah. I find the opposite. So I'm like, I started with focus and now I'm, like, totally into the meditate. Really? And that, yeah, it's been helping me a lot. When? How do you use the meditate? You just put it on? and So I put it on, and uh, a lot of times I'll do it on my walks uh, with my dog, and I'll oh, take it out. Yeah. Well, anyway, we talked to Dan Clark, who's the CEO of uh, Brain.fm, um, and we do have a hookup for you through Mind Pump. So if you go to Brain.fm forward slash Mind Pump, you get 20% off, and then it's $7 a month, which I think the price will be going up soon, and you get 5 free session so you can kind of try it out and see if i mean if we're lying see if it, if it doesn't blow you away then you don't have to i guess you <laughs> we're just <lying>. cancel <laughs> i mean i mean i mean we ha we don't right but like try it out for yourself i have yet to have anybody try it and not really like it yeah i mean it, sure. it's legit also uh this month what do we got going on this month oh we're giving away the, the no six bs six pack. pack formula this is a workout specifically designed for your core Normally, I think it's $57, but we're giving it away for free if you enroll in any MAPS bundle, um, including our super bundle, which is our one year of exercise programming program. It's a, it's a bunch of MAPS programs strung together. So if you have any questions on any of our MAPS programs or if you're interested in the bundle and the promotion with the free No BS six-pack formula, just go to mindpumpmedia.com. And without any further ado, here we are interviewing Dan Clark, the CEO of Brain FM. Dan, so how long have you been uh, running things over there at Brain FM? You're new. I am new. Um, so I've been there for about seven months running um, things, but I've been in the company since 2016 for two years now. Oh, what hmm. were you doing before? So I was head of engineering, actually. Oh, okay. So give the long story short is I was actually working in digital advertising, built a, a, an advertising agency in Boston, Boutique, and decided that I wasn't really contributing to humanity and um, started looking at different options. And Brain FM came actually up in an early newsletter email, right? One of their earlier blasts. And I tried it and I was like, whoa, this this is going to be huge. Hmm. So, Which one did you try? Yeah, was it Focus, your first? Focus, yeah. yeah I know. So I started playing Nailed with it. One. And I, I, I mean, <clears throat> to be completely honest, you know, we're, we're always fighting against people with binaural beats and people that claim things. And the reason why I tried this company was because of the science. And that was the aha moment. This is going to this is gonna be huge. And so I, I, I remember I actually called them and I said, hey, I want to work for you guys. And they were like, no, we're good. <laughs> and 12 times later, kept following up, following up. And I said, no, we can help. I ended up bringing on working for free for a little bit and moving up to head of engineering um, and then the XEO ended up moving on and I said, I can do it. And I jumped in and, uh, we've been rocking ever since. The, what wow. you, you mentioned binaural beats and that's the biggest, uh, confusion I get whenever I mention brain FM. I've yep. used binaural beats. I've also used brain FM. Mm -hmm. Very different. Yep. Both, both in the sound. 
So you guys actually play songs and stuff, and mm-hmm. it's kind of, and the effects are clear when I use Brain FM, like very, very clear. In fact, we travel quite a bit. Um, last month alone, we traveled uh, to Los Angeles and Tampa. And on the plane, I usually use uh, the Meditate or the Nap, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, songs that you have. And it's it's legit. I mean, it really works. I don't like flying. I'm not a big, I tend to be an anxious individual. There was one trip that we did. Where was it when we were on that little propeller plane that was just... Oh, it was Seattle. Yeah, it was Seattle. Yeah, it was... back. Okay, it was, no joke, the most... Uh, I've never experienced that much turbulence in my life. <laughs> it was totally a roller coaster. Uh, you know, people are praying, you know, yep. next to you, <laughs> and people are throwing up, and I'm already not a big fan of uh, flying. What saved my ass was the medita- uh, meditation, you know, mm-hmm. Brain FM. I had that in my headphones closed my eyes and it kept me from wanting to jump out of the out of the airplane but it's really effective what's the big difference between like how do i explain the difference between binaural beats and brain.fm because i always have trouble telling people like the difference between the two yeah so that's a really great question um so binaural beats is kind of leftover pop sci where it became really popular and it was this thing that was going to revolutionize the world and everyone was really into it and Later, even the person that kind of started the papers went back and was like, well, maybe there's not the same amount of evidence there, right? The difference is we don't use binaural beats. We use um, something called neural phase locking. And, you know, if you if you want to probably look for more information, there's on brainfm slash science. We go into it in detail. But basically, we use music differently. So we're using our AI and that's why we have it to resequence the music, to change the uh, phase variations, to change the um, different kinds of sounds, to just have your brain lock onto it. And then by entrainment and through that neural phase locking, it rises to that level that we're trying to change. Oh, so, 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 and I don't know if you can share this, but, uh, but <laughs> sure. so I, it sounds almost like you have test subjects measuring brain waves, and we know brain wave patterns strongly correlate to states of mind. So, yep. we can put stuff on someone's head, measure their brain waves, and say pretty accurately this person's meditating, this person's taking a nap, this person's sleeping, this person's focused based on those brain waves. So, it sounds like you hook people up. You have AI, which is measuring the brain, and as the music's going and it finds something positive, it does more of that. Something negative does less of that, and it it builds out sounds as it goes along or something like that? Close. So the AI, what we use is actually, we know the mental state we're trying to achieve. We know the oscillations. We know how the brain has to behave through those those um, through all the scientific research. And then the AI is more of a composer. So it's the thing that our composers work with in tandem. Mm. Um, and that's why we have just not, you know, crazy sounds. We have actual really good sounding music, which sounds something you'd listen to on Spotify. Right. Describe that too. How many composers do you have in the company and how does that work? Like, do they have a musical background and what does that look like? Yeah. So a lot of, uh, we have three full-time composers right now. Um, some of them are award-winning game, uh, video game composers. So mm. they make, music for video games um we actually just hired a composer um who's helping us with some of the music we'll talk about in a second uh the workout music mm. but oh, we'll get new. we'll get on to that in oh, a second yeah. Hell yeah um we're, we're playing with that right now but um but yeah there's there's uh there's kind of a dichotomy between the the music people and the ai right so the composer's know what they want to make and it's a very iterative process it's not just hey this is a song let's feed it through it Right. It's they work together. So the AI has the you know, this is the top level. This is the bottom level. And it's been refined. Uh, You know, when Adam, who's the founder of the company, he started this 16 years ago. It took six months to reach the, the level that you feel when you use our focus product. And he was able to refine that. And he actually built a previous business that licensed software out to um, different companies. So we have, you know, some of the other competitors of stuff. They use it and it works, but it's not as effective. And he saw them doing it and he's like, no, we can make something better. And he sat down and three years later, that's where Brain FM came from. Um, and that's why we have the science behind it, but also you can feel it in 10 minutes. And that's our whole claim. Give us 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, try focus, 
you're going to feel the effects of it. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's why we're so confident in saying Now, are you able to, Mm -hmm. were you guys able to patent that whole process or is it? Yeah, that's their secret sauce. So we have uh, a very large patent on the process and then we have a bunch of other patents as well as a bunch of patents (laughs) pending on the processes behind it. So you took the words out of my mouth because I'm like, wow, you know, this this gets out. It's everyone's (laughs) going to want to do it because you're right. Ten minutes because. I'll put focus on in my ears. There's one song in particular that I saved that's got like piano in the background. It's my favorite one. Mm -hmm. And you're right. It takes about, if I put it on and I'm kind of tired and spacey, it takes about five to 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden I feel, um, uh, motivated is not the right word. I guess focused is the right word, but it's kind of different. I don't feel speedy, Mm. but I do feel very singular in my, Mm -hmm. so if I'm trying to write a blog or write an article, um, or figure something out with one of our programs. If I'm listening to that, I find myself very like determined and again focused. Uh, but it does take about five or ten minutes to kick in. Now I do have a question about. I've wanted to ask this for so long. You guys recommend putting on headphones, listening on to it through headphones. All of us have experienced similar effects on speakers mm-hmm. without having it on headphones. Does it work? That way too, or are we just tripping? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, so it does work on speakers, right? We always recommend headphones though because it's a lot easier to control the sounds. Mm. So what happens, especially with focus, is there's a lot of vibrations going on, mm. right? There's a lot of um, different frequencies is a better word. And in, when you're in a room that doesn't have great speakers or even just your laptop speakers, it can bounce off things. It's not really created for that. Hmm. Um, we are actually rolling out and, and creating products for for speakers. So sleep is effectively like I can't sleep in headphones. Sure. I've, I've tried every single headphone for it. And I use I travel just as much as you guys, especially now. And I can sleep on a, on a plane because you can't fall over on your side. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're working with different speaker companies to produce specific, um, you know, sleep sleep music for it now i, I, uh, I use yeah. it in the in my bows almost uh yeah, you, yeah adam's the biggest uh, one yeah i i'm a big fan of the sleep component of it i mean the, i use the focus but i use sleep more than anything else because i'm i was already a rough sleeper i have a hard time settling down and that's just because i have bad habits of being on my laptop or being on my phone all yep. the way to the last minute and then it's hard for my brain to settle all the way down and then fall asleep mm-hmm. so when i don't do and i have like a little protocol of my lights going down and turning my phone and stuff off that if I do that, I can get a really good night's rest. If I don't, then Brain FM has always been my go-to. And we've actually got to a point where, and my girl loves it too, where I originally was putting it in my headphones and then sleeping with it. But we started playing it with my my Bose uh, portable speaker, and it just pointed right at us, yep. right by our headboard, and we both just get it. I was curious with that though, playing it over the speakers, like uh, about the regulations with like the FCC <laughs> and like what, like, is there any kind of restrictions with that as far as like music or, or something like that that influences uh, your mind? Sure. So before we go into that, I just want to highlight real quick for for the sleep. Um, you know, it works really great on the Bose because it's a high quality speaker, mm. right? And it is different than focus because sleep is slow wave. There's a lot more longer sounds. Mm. So if it bounces off like places in a room, your brain can decipher that. Oh. But for mm. focus, because it's moving so fast and if, if it bounces like off something weird or it's not as it slows much it down depth, and changes it. Yeah, it's not as, it, that makes as sense. good. You know, it's, it's kind of like... Um, I'm just trying to like some things will still work, mm-hmm. but not as to 100 percent. And when you're trying to focus, you want the best you can. So that's why we always say headphones first. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Um, as far as the you know playing it in a space and things like that, um, you know, not it sounds like not a sci-fi a, movie, right? Like I'm in a, I'm in a shopping mall. <laughs> yeah. And they're playing sounds. They're like we're gonna I just put imagine everybody. like you played over at school and everybody's on focus. Like, and like Orson yeah. Welles kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. haven't they already figured that out with grocery stores? I mean, I mean awesome. I, the music they play in grocery stores has already been. But they're like, not measuring brainwaves. <laughs> not yeah, like these yeah, guys are. I think it's a little bit different, right? So, you know, this kind of goes into the pop side too, as far as like subliminal messaging and things <laughs> yeah. like that, right? You can make the way that music is designed is to enhance what your brain is doing, right? So it's, it's again, that neural phase locking. And if it doesn't phase lock, then it's just like regular music. So you can play music of, I don't know, cars screeching and gunshots and things like that. And it can make people really frustrated, Mm -hmm. you know, but because we are, it's not designed to make someone frustrated, you know, it it doesn't, it can only enhance your brain because your brain's always listening and trying to, um, 
protect itself. So it's not mind control. No, there's there's no mind control. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. it, it's really interesting. Because I ordered like five years of Brain FM after listening to the first one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what's going on like, here? Weird. <laughs> yeah. No, um, Just kidding. you know, it's it's really interesting. So one of the things that I love about you know working here is we're on the bleeding edge of this audio neuro um, neuroscience, and one of the things that we've learned, um, or specifically myself, is that your brain is always listening. So if you're sleeping and I say your name, you're going to wake up, right? Why? Because back, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago, it's built for listening to danger. There's a lot of people, um, especially people listening, if you listen, if you're going to sleep and it's raining outside or there's thunderstorms, you sleep better usually. Reason is because predators don't hunt in thunderstorms. So just evolutionary you're you're building into this Dude, thing you know? i'll tell you something right now as a father 100 mm-hmm. percent. let me tell you something i could i could sleep through anything but if i hear a noise that sounds suspect or if my kids yeah, yeah. like some, a choking noise or dude something. oh man uh, i'm up this actually happened to me once i was at home and i had a patio uh, uh set outside in the backyard so i'm on mm-hmm. the i'm on the second story so this is downstairs out in the patio and I had an umbrella coming out of it, and it was really windy, and it knocked the umbrella over and shattered the glass in the table. So it sounded like someone broke through my my rear mm-hmm. sliding glass window. I woke up, or I should say I became conscious of being awake, already when I was halfway down the stairs with the sheets torn off the bed following me yep. with this rage. Like, God I had to for- protect my family. I would have yep. run through whatever was in front of me, and I wasn't even yep. aware that I was awake. So what you're saying is any mm-hmm. parent knows exactly what that's like. So that's actually, it's funny. That's how our focus music is designed. So the reason why it blocks out distractions is because of all these different things that we're doing with the music, because your brain is always listening for distractions. And it's really not distractions because back again, a hundred thousand years ago, it was alert, Mm. right? But now you get a ping on your phone and you know, your wife texts you right now it's a distraction but back then the ping on the phone was i have to i have to protect Be alert. so we, we live in a different kind of world today and that's why the music is so effective yeah the you know? the literally the opposite of being aware and alert of your surroundings is being extremely focused for mm-hmm. anybody who's ever been hyper focused on a particular task you lose sense of time you lose sense of space you don't know what's going on around you yep and uh you're i mean in 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 nature, it's probably not a good idea to do that. Uh, but in a, in a situation where you're trying to accomplish something, it's actually a pretty blissful, awesome feeling. I mean, I absolutely love it. In fact, I know, uh, and I was uh, funny. I had a doctor tell me I have adult ADD a long time ago, which I think is hilarious. But uh, you know, as when she told me this, I did a bunch of research and found that people with ADD and ADHD also have the ability to hyperfocus. Yep. So not only do they are they distracted but they have the ability to, you know, hyper focus. Mm-hmm. Um, have you guys worked with your sounds on helping people with other, you know, conditions other than the average person just want to get more focused and relax, but have you done stuff with like insomniacs or depression or, you know, anything like that? So uh, a few different things, right? So actually we uh, won a grant from the government from the National Science Foundation uh, that is basically all funded to help us prove that we can compete with different ADHD medications. That's crazy. Holy mm-hmm. cow. So that's a big deal. Yeah, that's it's massive. Wow. Yeah, so like Ritalin so, and So would, how did that how does that process work? Do you have to send them studies and apply and then they say, mm-hmm. "Okay, this looks promising. We're going to give you guys X amount of dollars." Yep. So there's different phases of the grant. We have phase 1, um, but that's exactly. So here's here's the, you know, papers, here's the stuff that we think we have a we have a theory, right? Here's the all the data that we have collected. Help us prove the theory is correct, right? And the whole National Science Foundation is is basically help to to help improve science. And this is one of the leading edges of science. So we did win that. The next phase um, is another additional funding for grant, but it also sets us up for RX classification. So right now, prescription. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So right now we're going through FDA um, approvals and we're getting that all set and we're like looking through that. But you know, Brain FM is a consumer product. It's been built for consumer product, but it's a plus one product. So if you have ADHD, it can help you. But if you want to use it as a tool to get in the zone, even if you don't have it, it's still going to help everyone. And 
we realize that some people may need even more than the consumer grade product that we have. So that's why we're going through this. So in the in five to 10 years from now, you could be in the doctor and your your doctor could say, here's these medications you can take that are mm-hmm. drugs, or you can listen to this music um, that's going to have the same exact effects of it. Well, wow. well, so it is now, is this public knowledge yet? Does, do people know this, that you guys are working on this? Um, I, I'm not sure if we've actually like went out and, and screamed from the rooftops yet. I um, ask because I just, I mean, I, I, sooner or later, big pharma is going to come slashing your tires. Yeah. And like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you start fucking oh, with man. big pharma uh, yeah. and their money and stuff like that. I can't imagine you're going to you you? get a lot of lobbying against you guys. Yeah. Probably. So I, I guess to address that real quick, cause it's, you know, I'm not here claiming that we're going to replace things, right. right? I'm I'm saying that this could be a step before, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or in combination of. Well, it's just like marijuana. Know? Marijuana wasn't going to re- replace options. all the, the drugs out there, but mm-hmm. we are seeing that it's helping some people that were on medication also. So Yeah, like so that's just for focus what we're just talking about, and that's kind of our spearhead into it. Mm-hmm. But we do, you know, we do have the also the intentions of doing anxiety and of doing um, like, uh, which we call it sleep and, and and different kinds of insomnia. We have a love letters channel on our internal communications, and we get thousands of, of love letters every single month. Month, right? And a lot of it has to come with uh, people that have PTSD, insomnia, and they're like, "Hey, I haven't slept well through the night within for twenty years," you know. And, and then they come to us, and they're like, "I finally got a good sleep. I finally slept well through the night." What, there was one time where our service went down um, and we have, you know, we have a lot of people that use our service and we went down for one, one night for like six hours. Right. And there was, you know, server, there was one of those times when, you know, the cloud went down, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, we're much more sophisticated now, but we had like 20,000 emails oh, saying, God. Hey, I don't care what it costs. <laughs> yeah, I can't sleep. <laughs> I right want now. to sleep working. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, yeah. and I think that, you know, not, not that we ever wanted that to happen, but that was proof. And that's one of the reasons why I get up every single day because, you know, and that's why I'm here. I want to, I want to share this. Like I, I came part of this company cause I wanted to help humanity. And then that's like reflective in our pricing and things like that. But we're, we think we have something and we have a responsibility to share this with people. I, mm-hmm. I uh, agree with you a hundred percent. I do have a question on, sure the long-term uh, efficacy of your product. Now, I know when, and, and this may be totally different, so I'm just t- asking this question because I, I personally want to know. I know that whenever you do something or take something that has an actual effect on the body, whether mm-hmm. it's positive or negative, the body aims to adapt to whatever that is by you know down-regulating receptors or this is true for exercise, drugs, like sunlight, my skin will start to adapt. All every, The body just tends to adapt. Are you seeing any evidence that it loses efficacy as people, if people use it for a long period of time consistently every day? Mm-hmm. Or are you seeing the opposite or does it not make a difference? Sure. So um, there's a few things that we actually have and, and it's one of the reasons why it's so effective. So we have 3D sound in, in, our, in our music. So next time you hear it, you'll actually hear the focal point of the sound being in front of you then above you, and then left, and it's randomized throughout the track. So it's really hard for your brain to lock on and to normalize it. And that's one of the reasons why oh, it's much more effective than hmm. white noise or binaural beats is because those it's are not just... not the same sound it, over and over. Yeah, there's no pattern to it, right? Or, or sorry, there is a pattern to it, but it, your brain can't figure it out kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's all this distractions and stuff that your body would normally or your brain would normally be paying attention to. It's, it, it's trying to figure out the, the different kinds and where the focal point of the sound is. Right? Now, is that to prevent what I talked about in potential adaptation or the... Basically, yeah, it's, it's to prevent the, the ad- adaptation mm-hmm. or normalization of it. Um, and then we've actually found something different. So as far as it being less effective, we've actually find it's kind of like that pathway in your brain. So we say 10 to 15 minutes, but people that listen to Brain FM regularly actually it doesn't take them 10 minutes to get in the zone because they've, they're already right. kind of exposed to it. Your brain is like, oh, I know what this is. And, and then five minutes. It's kind of like training your brain to actually zone in. So mm. I've... I've uh uh, experience that uh, subjectively, but do you guys have any, like uh, uh, when you guys test these these sounds on mm-hmm. people, do you see that as well? Do you see that, oh, they're in that brainwave pattern faster now because they've been doing it consistently or is that something? Yeah, so, you know, there's, you know, with the science, there's just so much and, and 
unfortunately science experience, mm. experiments are so expensive, right? Yeah. So we're we're predominantly looking at people that have never used Brain FM before rather than uh, and, and seeing like different applications for that rather than you know power users that use it. So that's something we want to do down the road. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're we're kind of in the preliminary research of testing our own user base. When you're when you guys are like doing research on these people that are hearing it for the first time, is there a lot of discrepancy between each individual or does everybody seem to have the same response? I everyone I turn it on to I've never heard a negative feedback. Like no mm-hmm. one's came back to me being like, "Oh, that doesn't work," or "It sucks." Like, yeah, you you typically will use one of them, if not all of them, and most people have all fallen in love with it. So, are mm-hmm. you are you seeing that across the board, or do you have some people that just it just doesn't work for them? So, I'm not the director of science, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. I was just talking. To, we have a few PhDs on staff that that work with us, um, but we, from my understanding, uh, from talking to them, people get it differently. So it, we have seen across the board, it helps everyone. Some people get a really great effect in the first three minutes. Some people get a really great effect in five minutes or nine minutes or whatever. Um, but it does go across the board in helping people. And that's why we have that 15 minute mark too, because some people, it works in three minutes. Some people works in 15. Let's just say 15, give us 15, right? Um, as far as going beyond the 15 minutes, that's when those effects start to, to stack though. Because there's a certain kind of that that level that we have, um, you know, we want to get to someone to that mental state. And the whole secret is not getting you there. It's keeping you there the whole time you're listening to the music. Mm. You know, does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you're testing uh, these songs out or when you when you, for example, um, submitted your studies to to apply for the grant uh, mm-hmm. from the government. Did you did you compare it to like placebo? Were you like, okay, here's people listening to us, and then here's people listening to because because music and sounds for sure affect uh, mm-hmm. people. We've known this obviously for forever, right? Thousands and thousands. That's why we listen to music. Music invokes emotion. It's been used that way for lots of for for long forever. Movies use music for for that. The radio, obviously, when we buy music to change or the way we feel or whatever. Are you guys? Could the result just be because people are listening to music or are you comparing it to music that doesn't have what you guys have versus yours? Yeah. So we listen, we, we tested against a few different things. We've tested against placebo music. We've tested against Spotify, just like focus music. Um, we've also tested against silence, right? And brain FM beats all of those. Um, silence is actually usually better for focus anyway, for, uh, for, you know, just working. Mm -hmm. Um, because, a lot of music, even though it, you know, a lot of music has sounds, a lot of music has, uh, well, sounds, but they have a lot of voice, right? And your brain is actually, even if you're not paying attention to it, it's still working hard to say, what is this person saying? Oh, right. Right? So silence is actually better usually than than most music. And because our music is designed to be, you know, more effective than silence, um, you know, that we do have that stuff, but that's actually on our science page. People you, can check that out. Do you personally use it with any sort of meditation or float tank? Have you messed around with things like that? I have tried it with float tanks before. Oh, you have. Um, I'm not just, I mean, to be completely honest, I wish I could do it more just because I'm just traveling so much and going all over. Uh, we have a few cool things coming up for everyone, but um, yeah, it, it, it's very interesting. Uh, I've done float, sta- float tanks before or without it and with it, and it definitely... You know, you know that feeling you're, you're in the float tank and it, you, you're there for an hour and you know it's a good session if it was like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then you have others that feel like four hours. Yeah. It's it's just, it's very, very different. Um, I I would let people, you know, do it. I'm not going to recommend or not. I think it really depends on what you're what you're looking for, you know. Um, specifically, we're, we're focused. We do have meditation. We do have the relax. Um, but our bread and butter right now is focus and sleep, mm. and that's what we're actively going a, into. A while ago, when we first started working or using your your product, mm-hmm. um, Adam comes in one day and he's like super excited. I have to share this. Yeah, go for he it. He shared it on the show already, so it's not a secret. <laughs> super excited, and he's like, "Dude, I got a hack." I'm like, "What?" And he goes, <laughs> "Listen to a book with your girl, <laughs> yeah. so you guys get nice and connected." And then put focus on the speakers and have sex. He's like the yeah. best sex ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he talked about yeah. doing it a bunch of times. That Justin tested it. I actually it. vouch for this yeah. uh, process. Yeah. yeah, that. So have you guys had anybody tell you, "Hey, man, this song is not only good for this, but I've also used it." 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna go into that stuff, but uh, <laughs> sex music would be awesome. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I mean, you know what? It's it's really just it's legit. Again, it's it's that mental that mental um, state you want to be in, right? right? right. And, and because we have a, I mean, we have just between last time and now, our our music that we're producing now is crazy compared to the music just two years just ago. Just more effective. Yeah, we have piano music you can go to and now we we understand the levels. So we can control the music to actually get you in the zone in five minutes and work three times as fast. But it's like getting on an elevator and just falling, <laughs> you know? So we have to do it gradual. But um, Now, why is that? Because uh, here's something I do notice. When I listen to Focus, I put it at the right... Uh, has to be at the right volume. If it's mm -hmm. too loud, it almost makes it me feel... It overpowers Well, it just feels weird. I don't mm -hmm. feel right. If I listen to the right volume, it's perfect. Is that is that because it's too much? Like you said, like I'm falling down an elevator? I don't know necessarily know if it's it's volume. Sometimes, I, I mean, it could matter on your headphones too and just okay. what's comfortable to you okay. because that's, you know, usually with volumes, the, you know, how your brain is, is absorbing the sound. Um, but we... We have different kinds of, um, you know, speed or, or different kinds of protocols too. So it's we don't just have one protocol that the AI uses. We have many different ones. So some tracks, because of the way um, they're designed, like like for example, our EDM tracks or electronic tracks, they have different protocols and they have to um, based on our piano tracks. Mm. So sometimes if people are in a se section and they're like, oh, I get a headache or I, I don't really feel it or don't like it. Um, I just suggest using a different kind of music. Um, is there a way to see, because I have the app, is there a yep. way to say, I want focus electronic, focus you know, piano, or is it just a random? No, so you can go to the explore section and you can actually see every single thing we have divided. Oh, I haven't done that yet. Yeah, we're, we're working on um, you know, actually updating the app, the design and all that stuff. Unfortunately, it takes a long time because mm -hmm. you know, we have to make sure it's, it's stable. Um, but eventually we'll have something. So if you predominantly use just electronic, it just, it'll just adapt to you. So we do, you know, based on how people skip and, and use the tracks and, and the app right now, um, it does adjust to, to yourself and everyone, but we're going to be doing a lot more redefined. So now you can select the experience you're doing and you're saying, Hey, I want to focus. I want to crush emails today, or I want to study for a test and it'll play a playlist design for you. And then it will adapt to you as you use it for other things. What are you guys doing right now as far as uh, marketing and advertising? Are you getting on? I know way back when, when we first met mm -hmm. uh, Adam and all them, they were they were doing something with one of our buddies, Kyle Kingsbury. They had started a podcast and that didn't really turn out. Mm -hmm. Are you guys advertising on podcasts right now or any other places? Like how, how are you guys getting out there? Yeah. So, I mean, part of the thing when I came in um, and kind of reshuffled things as far as leadership, um, I want to make sure, one, that we focused on getting our product stable, right? So uh, when we first, we have, you know, iPhone and, and Android apps, um, we've stabilized those um, and, and made sure that we could kind of make things inside the company so we could grow really quick. Um, so to answer your point, I guess, directly is we're not doing a ton of marketing right now, but that's what we're focused on this half of the year. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, one, one, why I'm here. Um, but two is we're doing some other podcasts and then we're going to be heavily into, you know, referral systems, you know, Facebook marketing, things like that. So far you guys have grown pretty organically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We actually have over 600,000 people in our database. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah, have tried us. Yep. That's great. Wow. Yep. And we've never, I mean, we've done some, some small PR stuff. We've done some small podcast stuff, but that's, we know that's from referrals and that's why I'm mm. so excited. Now, do you guys have multiple membership options? I mean, how do the member, all the memberships work? Sure. So we have um, monthly, yearly, um, tri-monthly, and then on our web, we have lifetime as well. Okay. We're actually getting rid of lifetime. So I don't know when this podcast comes out, um, but we're getting rid of it because we know how fast we're growing our, our um, it's worth company. it to get lifetime. I, I feel like you guys are going to be so much more mm -hmm. expensive Robust. later on because yeah. it's quite effective. Yeah. I mean the whole price, like honestly, I've had people, um, I've had, uh, you know, other people that have similar businesses. They're like, you could charge 25, 50, a hundred dollars a month for this because it's a tool and people will pay for it. Right. But our whole mission is to help change the world through music and redefine what that means to people. And that's why we're priced affordably. Mm -hmm. So we may go up a few bucks, um, but that would only be because the service demands, you know, more things from it. 
So uh, you, but when you came in here, you kind of mentioned that you guys are working on new stuff. Like and even before this, you mentioned that, you know, there was plans for a workout. Uh -huh. Can you walk us through what that looks like and what your plans are with it? Sure. They, I, I mean, we have, so not only do we have workout music, but we have some really cool other stuff that we can kind of mention or talk about stuff that we're experimenting with. So we can talk about it if we have enough time, but as far as workout music, um, yeah, I mean the, the plan is to make music designed to get you in the zone and whether that's weightlifting and you want that pump um, or if you are running and you want that runner's high being able to get that so like you know my background is you know I'm very active I have a black belt as I mentioned to you guys um, and you don't always get a pump you know what I mean and, or yeah. it's different degrees and what if we could make music that you listen to and every single rep or every single workout is the best workout you've had. Yeah, well. That's the whole premise. So we actually, we've been playing with this for a while. Um, it our, sounds too good to be true, I but know. shit, it if does, you hit right? that, that's <laughs> yeah. like, can I invest? You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> yeah, I know yeah, how much yeah. that'll be worth. No, I mean, and that's what's exciting. So we look at we look at the success we've had so far, and if you look at it, a lot of people listen to music when, there's, when they're working and sleeping, right? But everyone listens to music when they're working out. Like mm -hmm. everyone does. Mm -hmm. right. So we, our whole thing is like, how can we just help augment people in what they're already doing and workout is a is a no-brainer if we can figure it out i just started listening so internally we test everything ourselves and then we have you know some pilot stuff just to make sure because we are science first and we want to make sure that every product that we give out we have a you know a stamp of approval mm -hmm. um but the stuff that I, I was listening to just this morning when i was getting ready was like taking a shot of coffee it was for reals it was crazy huh. yeah i haven't i haven't i mean you guys gave me some of your coffee, but this yeah. is the first cup I've had today. Um, <laughs> Do but, you have uh, pro athletes or anybody like you're you're experimenting with this or like? Um, for as far as workout, not yet. It's mm -hmm. it's too it's too you know early. early but yeah. with that, something we're we're probably going to push for. I mean, we have a lot of pro athletes that actually use our focus product. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure if I can I can name them, so I won't. But um, Michael Jordan, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, we for the further workout stuff, that's something we can do. Um, you know, I, I think it'd be great to get professional runners or professional cyclists that not only can say. Oh yeah, I actually feel it, but actually show it with results. Oof. You know. Mm -hmm. So if you said like I, you know, I have a lot of so I cycle myself, and if you said you could listen to music that could take five minutes off my you know twenty mile ride, no brainer. You know what I mean? Right. And the same exact thing like like with working out. For some reason, even if even if it's something that it gets you in that state, so you can push more. And you get more out of it. That's that's really the name of the game. It, like I'm, we're not going to make music that's going to make you lift lift twenty percent more. No, um, because that's your body. Yeah. But if we can get your mental state there, that's going to get you stronger Sounds and motivated. Than and, you know. and this is not. Yep. And this, by the way, this is it's obvious. Now, if you can do it, that's awesome. But it's obvious. I music for sure impacts athletic performance they've done 100 percent. they've done yeah, studies so on this studies. left and right mm -hmm. yeah tons of stuff i know if i'm about to do a heavy everybody lift, has that pr song right? yeah you put celine yeah. dion on i'm not gonna be you know <laughs> pulling 600 pounds off the floor so yeah. basically the whole thought though is what if because a lot of people they know what mental state they want and they search for music for it mm -hmm. right what if you said this is the mental state we want here's the music so that's the whole thing right like a lot of people like what tom brady has is his pre-game playlist right what if you said okay i want to listen to this kind of music and i want to get in the zone i wanted to keep me there the whole time i'm working out like that's the whole theory behind it mm. so we know that music impacts the brain as far and, and there's like you said there's tons of studies for it but our whole thing is we want to make it so every single time yeah mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. a large part of the reason why just regular music does that to people is just the associations like i mm -hmm. can play I can play the so the soundtrack to Rocky Four. Okay, mm -hmm. I watched Rocky Four. Well, Rocky fights the Russian, by the way, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for all you for all you people under a rock. Uh, and the reason why that shit works for me is because when I was a kid and I watched Rocky Four, mm -hmm. that was like holy shit. That was the most inspirational, motivational. Like he's fighting the Russian, he's winning. But if I play Rocky Four soundtrack to a bunch of sixteen year olds today who've never seen Rocky Four, it ain't gonna do shit for them because it's, the, it's the association that creates that yep. that brain state. But what you're saying is the music that you guys are producing 
doesn't have to have an association. The music itself well, that's creates because it, a state. That's because it's not only association that makes you do that. There's many other factors yeah. that that's give you that. That's because of all the neural phase locking and the things behind it, the mechanism. So what if what if this, though? Imagine, imagine you know, again, this is all, we're, we're working to prove this, right? But what if you had a playlist that was designed, was engineered through science to get you there, and then you also had association. So you On had top a, of it. Yeah, so you had a, you know, five songs that you played, you listened to before you jumped in the pool as Michael Phelps or you, you know, whatever, whatever activity you need to do. And you had the associations built there and you trained with it and it was also designed to get you there. I, I don't know if you guys uh, talked about this last time or if th- this was afterwards, but the last Olympics, so the Summer Olympics, we had wrestling. Did you guys did you guys hear about mm-hmm. this? Yeah, they tried to. They, I think they tried to eliminate wrestling yeah, now, right? Oh well, no, um, that wasn't my my. So we actually did a pilot with Olympic wrestling. Team. Oh, you did? Oh. Yeah, um, and they listened to music, some of the focus music before their their sets of what they do, and they'd also use our sleep at night. And uh, I, I believe, and I and I could be wrong, but I'm almost ninety percent, hundred percent confident. Um, no, but but really the the. Um, the youngest male competitor for the U.S. won gold. He and he used their product every single day. Oh. So you know that that we know that there's something there because that was just that was focus music that wasn't specifically designed for working out. So mm. or designed I, to him, right? It wasn't. Right. Yeah. So now we're we're building on that premise, and it, mm-hmm. it takes a long time to do it. But if you had workout and it got you in the zone, it made you work harder, it motivated you. Um, you got that runner's higher, that pump we talked about, and then you use their sleep product to sleep. And you slept through the night. Mm-hmm. You know what's it? What's that going to turn into? Is is it now? Is the AI you guys are building into it? Is it like going to be kind of like Pandora, where I thumb up if it was like a, I enjoyed it a lot or a great workout? Or? Yeah, there's mm-hmm. there's two parts of the AI. There's the composer that is you know our backbone. It's our secret sauce, and then uh, the algorithm of how we sort music, how we you know put buckets of personas together. So yeah, exactly. We're going to build out out that kind of thing. That's cool. What what has surprised you the most so far working with Brain FM in terms of how people are using it or reacting or responding to what you guys are doing? Good question. Um, You know, so I fully believe in what the company is doing and that's why I quit my job to to come here. And I think the, the biggest surprise is how many people this this can actually influence because it doesn't matter if you speak English or Chinese you know it doesn't make, like we're all we're all this we're all very similar right as far as how our brain works and things like that right and I I think I'm I'm just most surprised on how many other people are getting it now you you like how many people are, I'm like you know what just try it and they try it and they go oh oh I get it like I, we we have I have people that call me all the time time and they're like. I want to work for you too, <laughs> you know, and I wish I could hire everyone. But like, I think that we're, we're, we're almost setting a whole new space for what music, a different kind of category of music, like an enhancement, um, on top of things. So it's, it's really, really great to see how many people support us in the journey. Um, and they want to help out, you know, that's cool. Um, you were, you, you had mentioned there's some cool things that you guys are looking into, you talked about the workout one, but mm-hmm. what other categories? If oh, it, Yeah, so there's a few different things. Um, some things are way too early to say, and, and some things are still wicked speculative, right? That's my Boston coming out. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, so we just had a, uh, our, our head of operations actually just had a baby, right? Shout out to Aaron. And uh, he... We so we one of the things because this is mind altering and and um, so is caffeine you know same sure. thing we do have a warning that says you know legally you have to be eighteen to use the product oh right? I didn't know that mm. um, so I'm just gonna say that before I say this right because I'm not saying to anyone to do this right but uh, a lot of people they use n- like white noise and stuff for their kids right mm-hmm. and that's actually shown in studies to actually not hurt the child, but not be great for a developing child. Uh, there's a lot of scientific research on mammalian mm, brains and things like that. Really? But um, imagine if you had the best lullaby created by science for your kid. <laughs> so your your baby fell asleep. You want to talk about game changer, minutes. bro? Yeah. Also, you parents that can I don't actually have kids. Sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they keeping me from having kids right yeah. now, bro. I can't have six months of no sleep. <laughs> there, there's there's stuff that we're beginning to look into it's way too early and i again i do not recommend this to anyone sure. legally um just you know want to put that out there <laughs> um 
But we believe that we could do something like that too. It's got to be less scary than what already is out there, right? Rock, I know it's goodbye, funny, baby. <laughs> and then it like yeah, there's, falls and dies. There's a lot of sound machines out there and white noise. Um, you know, a lot of people use that in busy cities. And again, there's there's hasn't been studies on on. I don't believe in babies for that, but there's been studies on like 24 hours for like like rats and things like that, and it does affect growth. It'd be interesting how that yeah. would influence our mind going forward after mm-hmm. that. You know, the, I'm I'm reading a, a neuroscience psychology book right now, and one of the things it challenges the classical view of of what we believe before. Where like you guys kind of mentioned earlier about this primal instinct mm-hmm. to react, and what they're saying is that that's kind of been disproven. That it's not just that. There's so many different variables that make the brain decide or certain neurons fire yep. and it's it's a cluster of them it's not like this exact pathway that mm-hmm. every time you hear that rustle in the brush you go to flight or fight or like you mm-hmm. said earlier well part of what really makes that happen is the it's a multiple factors lots of information yeah lots of information that and your brain is predicting what it could potentially be and it's not a direct flight or flight response and so if training the if you start to get those sounds the baby used to that at early age i wonder if that would just set him up or her up for later like to just fall right into it you know like i wonder how that'll influence them. yeah we don't we don't really know i mean the the one of the coolest parts about this is parts of the brain we still don't know how it works we don't know what consciousness is even right, yeah, and, right. and we're on like the the leading edge of figuring that out um the founder he's he's still he's very confident that we've only figured out 2% you know, wow. that there's so many more things. So, you know, down the road, I know you're joking and, and we talked about sex before and stuff, but like, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not here to say yes or no, but like, there's, there's a lot of really, really interesting stuff. And, and, and again, I mean, we're, I'm communicating to everyone listening by moving my mouth and making vibrations that are, yeah. you know, when, like, it's, it's really, really great. So our whole, our whole culture has been able to, build from communicating through sounds absolutely yeah, Barry white's done it right yeah i was, yeah. I was just gonna say back in the day we used to give girls yeah. mixtapes it's gonna be totally different now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah hey my, babe listen to the song here's my sex tape oh, we, oh weird you horny <laughs> okay Brave uh but no Booty i mean mix it, the the i am not saying that yeah. <laughs> our ability to discern sounds and inflections and mm-hmm. it's just it's mind-boggling uh, how mm-hmm. cute uh, it is, and we're built with communication. that. We're yeah. built with a baby can hymn back a song to you, and they can't. They don't even know what mama is yet. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're we're you know we're leading the edge. There's so much more that we can do, but you know, right now we do have a product we're very proud of that has shown to work on a, a wide variety of people. Um, you know, again, for people that are looking to become a better individual. Right. And, and use it as a tool. And then people that are looking to normalize and, and not use mm-hmm. tons of medications for it. You the know? two most exciting things for me that you talk about are the ones, the, the sounds and songs that can calm anxiety mm-hmm. because uh, statistically like speaking, epidemic right, right now, now yep. anxiety is the number one mental health issue. It's exploding. Mm-hmm. Kids are getting it um, now, whereas kids used to not get it. And the other one is you know, attention deficit disorder or attention deficit hyperactive disorder because the percentage of children that are on methamphetamine or methamphetamine-like drugs is actually quite uh, alarming. It's extremely alarming and it's scary. So if if we can find an alternative to those things, um, then that's awesome. But my other question with that is side effects. Uh, I have yet to notice any side effects for any any of your products but mm-hmm. are, are there any side effects that you could, that you need to warn about or anything that you guys have seen there's only one that we've encountered and that's just headaches if you are dehydrated so mm-hmm. the whole product mm-hmm. and the whole way these other ADHD medicines work is they take blood from your extremities and they pump it into your brain basically like redistributes blood in your body mm-hmm. our music actually does the same exact thing so that's what we can see the blood flow. And that's why we have, we feel like we can change it and redistribute it maybe um, for the workout stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, but. Oh, I see. To the uh, muscles. Maybe. You yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you said that. Yeah. So, but. Oh, wait a minute. Redirect blood to the extremities. Uh, I can see the sex one now. <laughs> oh, dude. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Targeted. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, as, as far as our product, we, we just say, you know, if, if you get a headache, drink some water. You know, or try something, try a different kind of music because some people they really like the class, the the piano stuff, 
but some people like more of the electronic or mm-hmm. some of the background. It just it just really depends on. There's still some fine tuning. Have you guys you. tested like do, like dopamine levels and catecholamines while people are on these yet, or is it all Not yet. stuff? Not yet. Yeah, that's something that will probably going in. I mean, I think part of it too is is behind motivation mm-hmm. um, is being happy too. You know, it, so I, I think that's something that could be interesting, but. We just don't have enough science on that yet. Well, fuck, excellent, man. We're, we're, I tell you what, I mean, we've been affiliated with you guys for a while, but we not under, under any obligation to mention you guys. Mm-hmm. We, it's always, it's literally organic when we mention you guys because even till this day, it's been how long has it been now since we oh, first used it? A year, two, almost two years, almost two, two years. years yeah. yeah, and it's it's the it's it's oh, one we of all the use it every day almost. Yeah, it's one of the products I use still to this day. So we'll just mention it organically mm-hmm. because we still use it. So. I mean, I totally vouch for its effectiveness, and it is exciting that you guys did get that grant and that people that they're maybe looking at this as a either an adjuvant or an alternative to medications for treating things like ADD. So, yep, exciting stuff, yeah, man. It's great. Very exciting. Yeah, appreciate you coming on and, and talking to our audience about this kind of stuff. My pleasure. My pleasure. I hope to come back someday. Very oh, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.